My name is Don K. Preston, and I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. This is number 49 in our thematic study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul said the resurrection would be at the end when Christ would, quote, deliver the kingdom to the Father. It is generally said, or it is said among certain commentators, I've shared with you one, one commentator, who say that at his coming, there, there is a change in administration, that Christ surrenders his throne. Now, certainly the word until indicates something. And the word deliver, paradidomi, indicates something. But the, that word, paradidomi, does not mean surrender as it is used in 1 Corinthians 15. You know, it's amazing to me how specious the hermeneutic of some people is. They go to a text, they find some words as used in that context. And they they run to books that are discussing topics and subjects that are totally unrelated to this context, in which the word is being used in one way in that text. And they say, ah, see, because it's used this way in that text, demands that it be used that way in this text. No, immediate context is always the final determinative for the definition of words as being used in that context. Well, I could say a whole lot about hermeneutic on this, but I want to share with you a little more about the relationship between Daniel 7 and Paul's statement that at his coming, Christ would deliver the kingdom. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel saw a vision of four beasts. The fourth beast is, without any doubt, Rome. And in the days of Rome, a little horn rose up, and Daniel chapter 7 talks about what that little horn would do. He would speak pompous words, and he would persecute the saints, according to later in Daniel chapter 7. But, what's what's so critical for us to understand is that Daniel 7 is talking about the days of the Roman Empire. All right? You cannot get Daniel 7 beyond the days of the Roman Empire. Empire. Now, I was raised in a, in a fellowship that said that little horn is the Roman Catholic Pope. No, sorry. The little horn belongs to the days of the fourth beast. He does not belong to the days of America or Russia or China. That little horn is restricted to the days of Rome, not a restored Rome, the days of Rome that existed in the first century. Now, that little horn would persecute the saints and speak pompous words against the Most High. He would wear the saints out, according to Daniel 7, 19 and following, until the coming of the Son of Man. Uh Uh-oh. What does that mean? That means that the coming of the Son of Man and Daniel 7 had to have occurred in the days of Rome. Once again, not 2,000 years after Rome was destroyed, in the days of Rome. Now that little horn, once again, would persecute the saints. But the Son of Man would come at the time, now watch this, when the judgment would be set, and what would happen to the little horn? I watched then, because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking, I watched until the beast was slain, and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. This is the destruction of the little horn. For persecuting the saints. Coming of the Son of Man for the persecution 
of the persecu- uh, for the destruction of the persecuting power in the days of Rome. If it is the case that the coming of Christ in Daniel 7 and the coming of Christ in 1 Corinthians 15 are the same coming, it means that the coming of the Son of Man in 1 Corinthians 15, at which time he would, quote, deliver the kingdom to the Father, but according to Daniel chapter 7, he would be given the kingdom. That means you cannot get the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 out of the days of Rome, in which Paul was living, in which Paul was writing, and in which the saints were being persecuted by old covenant Israel, and Jesus said he was coming in that generation, in judgment of old covenant Jerusalem and Israel for persecuting the saints. His coming would be against Babylon, Revelation 18 and 19, the city which had killed the old covenant prophets. It is where the Lord was slain, and it is the city guilty of killing the apostles and prophets of Jesus, Revelation 18, 20 through 24, and Jesus himself and Paul himself identified Jerusalem, only one city is ever identified as the city that killed the prophets. It is where the Lord was slain, and it is the city guilty of killing the apostles and prophets of Jesus. So let me say this again. If the coming of the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7 is the same coming of the Lord of 1 Corinthians 15, the time of the kingdom, then number one, it is restricted to the days of Rome. You can't get it out of the days of Rome. Number two, it is specifically in judgment of the persecuting little horn, and Jesus identified the persecuting little horn in the days of Rome as no one but Old Covenant Jerusalem. And that means the coming of the Son of Man of Daniel 7 and the coming of the Son of Man in 1 Corinthians 15 is confined to the days of Rome and the time of the judgment of Old Covenant Israel, Jerusalem, for persecuting the saints. And that happened in AD 70. If you want a further discussion of how critically important Daniel 7 is for properly understanding New Testament eschatology. You need to get a copy of my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. In this book, I conflate, I demonstrate how Daniel 7 lies behind so many New Testament prophecies of the, of the resurrection, of the judgment, of the day of the Lord. And remember, you can't get Daniel 7 beyond the days of Rome. And Jesus placed his coming in judgment of the persecutors in A.D. 70. 